We have a jam-packed, massive show for you today. We've got important news. We go into depth on all of the matchups and, of course, our starts of the week. But make sure you stay tuned for the end of the show. My best work ever in the Boom Boom Kicker segment. I know you're not supposed to say that about yourself, but you got to call a spade a spade. It's excellent work. Stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Like the video. Subscribe. And enjoy the ride. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuously invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. Also, do you find yourself ordering you know, with DoorDash more than twice per month, like me in that case? Per month? Yes. That's I mean, the, they didn't. They weren't asking per it's day? It's not per day, but okay. I mean, don't ask me. Let's talk about getting you signed up for Dash Pass. It's the easiest way to save money on what you're already eating. Dash Pass is a membership that offers unlimited $0 delivery fees from thousands of restaurants, grocery stores, and convenience stores. With your membership, you can save an average of 4 to $5 on each order you place for delivery or pickup. That means on average, Dash Pass pays for itself when you order twice a month, and we know you are. If you're ready to save money on DoorDash orders, use the promo code FOOTBALLERS for 50% off your first order of $12 or more after you sign up for Dash Pass. That's 50% off your first Dash Pass order up to $20 value with promo code FOOTBALLERS. Say goodbye to delivery fees. Get Dash Pass from DoorDash today using promo code FOOTBALLERS. When you've got zero delivery fees, you're free to get more because you can start your free month trial today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Ooh. I don't know about that. It was different. I don't know about that. You know what I don't know about? I don't know how to feel. You know what? You, I don't know about tonight's game. Okay. <laughs> Look, you, you whispered. We are on a cold streak of these primetime games. We got off too hot. Yeah. I mean, we started the year where every primetime game was a, a, an incredible matchup, and even when it wasn't the best matchup on paper, the game was outstanding, and you're right. It is – we've been in the, the freezer aisle for a couple Look, of weeks here. When you're out late for the party, you, the fun is never going to end. There will, there will not be repercussions for what I am doing right now. And then you wake up <laughs> and you go, oh, I have made a mistake. Speaking of tonight's game. Speaking of mistakes. I believe well, we were looking yesterday for like the showdown series on DraftKings. Like Matt, oh, yes. Matt Ryan is the most expensive player. Yeah. What? Yes. If you want the most expensive captain for your lineup, it's Matt Ryan, who I'm not even sure I want in my lineup. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big things coming tonight, guys. So the contrarian play is to pay up for the most expensive player for your roster. The contrarian play is to spend, yeah, to spend the most money on Matt Ryan. No one's going to do it. So, yeah, we do. I mean, we have a football game tonight. You wouldn't be able to tell if you listen to Mike's It's you, Football Time. You would. It's football time. Yeah. Uh, never not working on today's show, news and notes, matchups, starts of the week, boom, boom, kicker. We'll be here for... Hours, just hours and hours and hours talking fantasy football. But that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what we like to do. Despite, I mean, we were up late. We went to the Suns game last night, 10 in a row. Oh, Had man. a good time. It was a Saw good time. Saw some Foot Clan people down there. Yeah. Oh, ran, that's ran, fun. Ran into uh, plenty of our people. And uh, what was super great is the people that were next to us, they decided not to show up to the game. So we got the extra oh, wide seats. What? I scooted over one. No one on the left. No one on the right. Ooh, them legs were wide. <laughs> it, you you should have seen Jason because, like, normally the games, you get you see the countdown for tip off. You're getting ready for the game. It's a sellout. I think the game was on ESPN or TNT last night. It's the Mavericks. And, um, I mean, it's filled up. And the two seats next to us are the only two not filled. And he's just waiting. Everybody coming out of the tunnel, he's sizing oh, them up. I'm judging them all. It's like the airplane. Yeah, you're on thing. the aisle. Yeah, and he's and he's and and somehow, some way, the only two people that didn't come to this game 
were the two people next to us. That's outstanding. Yeah. It was, it was wonderful. A, it was a good night. And then he started talking about how he's going to buy four tickets and just only <laughs> use two. <laughs> and um, this is the new policy. But, yeah, it was a good time. All right. You can find us on YouTube. Watch the show. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Jason's facial hair is on the way back. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. Join the foot.com's the community. Let's get it going. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, so we are digging into second half breakouts, guys to target in trades, or maybe that are on the waiver wire. Um, we talked about wide receivers. Or I'm sorry, last week we talked about quarterbacks and running backs. Today we're talking about wide receivers and tight ends. So we looked over the last three years at who made the second half jump. Like what to see if there's any similarities in these players and what we can look for and target going forward. So in 2020, we saw Justin Jefferson, Corey Davis, Marquise Brown, and Marvin Jones Jr. have that second half jump. Um, 2019, Devontae Parker, A.J. Yeah, Brown. Remember, remember Parker? Oh, yeah. oh Parker big time. And, and A.J. Brown was, yes. was dominant. Uh, Debo had a great second half to 2019, and Brashad Perryman, who was kind of an outlier to all of this, uh, his opportunity skyrocketed. And in 2018, it was T.Y. Hilton, Amari Cooper, and Julian Edelman. And, and when we look through this entire list and, and what happened, uh, here are our kind of takeaways. One, the younger, the better. For the most part, the majorities of these, uh, the rookies, mm -hmm. the second half of the season, we've been talking about this a long time since since before the draft season. They have, you know, young stud rookies have second half breakouts. Uh, also, draft pedigree. The last two years, seven of the eight second half wonders were all top fifty NFL draft picks. So you got young guys drafted to be great. Who guess what? They're great the second half of their rookie year. That is fascinating because, you know, we're, we're reading through the list of the, the players that broke out, and you they weren't necessarily all rookies or second-year players, but it's like Corey Davis, Parker, Perriman. It took them a little bit, but those were all – Top 15. Those were all first-round draft picks. Absolutely. Do you feel like that <laughs> is a – so I have like – I'm coming off of two weeks of Devontae Smith having you know, big weeks, right? And there's part of me that thinks, hey, I need to cash in on Devontae Smith right now with the passing pie and the volume in Philadelphia. I would not. I was going to say, could that be a mistake then for your fantasy team to, you know, would you trade him for Deontay Johnson? Uh, yeah, I, for Deontay, sure. But it, but I mean, you wouldn't you be would... trying to, to go grab somebody of a, a lower tier. Correct. Exactly. I'm not could, doing a two for one. Yeah, for... if you can trade up, that's good. But don't view it as capitalizing on what he's done because he could do much more than mm -hmm. he's done the first half of the year. So um, here's the candidates that, that we're looking at. And what's really great about this never not working, if you listen to yesterday's Strength of Schedule show, it just so happens that a lot of these names overlap. So it's compounding. It's really telling that going forward – uh, the guys I think that we should be targeting, two of them are rookies, Jalen Waddle and Elijah Moore. Uh, Jalen Waddle, the targets are there. He's on pace for 146 targets. He's yet to break big plays. Only two plays over 20 yards so far, and this is a guy who has game-breaking speed. Mm -hmm. um, he was a big play guy in college. We loved his film. He was my number two wide receiver coming into the draft. Absolutely loved him. Um, he's been good, not great. I think you can get him for, for pennies. Uh, so he would be one target. And Elijah Moore, um, he's got three weeks in a row of fantasy relevance. It was garbage last week. But the nice thing about the Jets is they're always going to have garbage time, at least a half of it. Um, and then the other name, I'll quietly say this, <laughs> Brandon Ayuk. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is young. He was drafted in the top 50 picks. He has the chance. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. He has the chance to be uh, number one or number two in the pecking order. And really, some of these breakouts have happened because of breakdowns. You know, Brashad Perriman didn't play his way into the starting role. Right. What happened was, you know, the guys in, ahead of him went down and he had the ability to step up. Well, Brandon Ayuk has the ability to step up and Debo has the ability to break down sure uh, so should that happen he's someone you would want on your team couple At tight ends from 2020 in this category logan thomas mike gesicki were big second half breakouts that won people championships especially logan thomas who 
very well could do that again. It's not impossible this year if he can get back mm -hmm. from IR. Back in 2019, Jared Cook went from the tight end 29 in the first half to the tight end one oh, in the Jared second half. Cook. He was kicking. He was kicking by the Buick. Uh, Tyler Higby <laughs> went from tight end 34 to tight end three. And so what are we looking for with tight end? Yeah, so we want a pass rate that is elevated, teams that are often trailing, and vacated targets in season, injuries to the pass-catching receiving core. Um, and you want a lot of uh, routes run and room for positive touchdown regressions. So there's a lot of things to look at there. Uh, uh, Pat Fryermuth comes to mind in the sense of the receiving core getting injured. Um, but Logan Thomas, I, I know we've brought his name up. He has a pathway forward should he get back. And I, we were talking about this on Green Room last night. I think it was on Green Room, where we feel like the season is we're nearing the yeah, playoffs. Yeah. We're getting to the end. There's there are so many weeks left of football. Um, if he takes three or four more weeks before he comes back. He's still got a lot of important football left, so he's a name. Um, no fan. He has the number three easiest strength of schedule for tight ends. Uh, young, highly drafted. Uh, he's been a huge disappointment so far, but, I mean, that's the point, right? We're looking for guys who haven't done it yet. Right. Yeah, it's – I think I said it last week of, like, these can feel really stupid until they're they're not. Mm -hmm. And you look back and go, oh, look at – yeah, that breakout, that was awesome. It's, you didn't – just because of the the prior production in the name, you weren't expecting the breakout, but you have to clear the clear the brush to see uh, see the true path forward. Yeah, and and uh, the last name I'll bring up is Austin Hooper. You talk about you know receiving core changing, sure. losing Odell yeah. Beckham. He has the number four easiest strength of schedule for tight ends. Plays Baltimore twice going forward. Um, so he he's someone that has the chance to kind of tear jump. In the, in the second half. Th those are the type of players you want to look at on your waivers or in trades. Awesome. Well, you can get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's mm. never not working. Oh, never not working. With head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, well... <clears throat> Any hot tips for this one? Damian Harris removed from the injury report will play. Oh, brother. So I have I am in the boat that many of you are in. Damian Harris from Andre Stevenson on the same team. Damian Harris is right back into my starting lineup against Atlanta tonight. And Ramondre's on my bench. Yeah. So that's how the the process says that is what it has to be. That does not mean that Bill Belichick can't come out and be like, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I thought about playing both. Sure. I thought about we got a two flex league. I thought about putting Ramondre in there in place of Jeff Wilson this week, with the but Jeff Wilson has this stuff around you know Elijah Mitchell might not play, um, so I'll probably just roll Damian Harris out there. But uh, I think that's a good decision. Yeah, speaking of decisions, Cordero Patterson will be a game time decision tonight. We speculated on the Wayne Gallman usage early in the week. Talked about the fact it was a blowout. Talked about the the work. I mean, he has more juice. He looked better, but at mm -hmm. the same time, you're in a blowout, so it's hard to draw big time conclusions. Arthur Smith came out and said, "Look, we knew we had to play Thursday. You're getting blown out. Mm -hmm. That's why you saw a heavy dose of Gallman and Rosen. So he put them in the same category. It, that means it's Mike Davis. It means that yeah. Mike Davis is more likely to get uh, the snaps, the work if Cordero's not in. Now, if Cordero's in, a lot of people might." I mean, do you just play him? Oh, yeah, man. I would. I would play Cordero Patterson if he's in, just because of it, it, assuming you're in any kind of half PPR or full PPR. I think the targets will be there. Um, you know, I I I still expect New England to focus on Kyle Pitts, whether they can stop him or not. That's that's a human problem. Um, be better for Pitts than for Cordero to be back. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Better for Pitts. Uh, for Cordero to be there and Calvin Ridley, if you want to come back, Julio, if you want to come back too, yeah, also better. Up. Honestly, if if Kyle Rod, Pitts, Roddy White, are you out there, <laughs> Roddy White, get on, come on back, if, Tony Gonzalez, he's doing, he's not doing much. If Kyle Pitts could be like the third option in an offense, it would just you couldn't stop him. Honestly, you saw you saw the breakout performances from Pitts, the ones that went up above and beyond, the like, you know, number one on the week when Calvin Ridley was back, mm -hmm. taking the top off the defense, somebody to think about, um, 
they're going to have to fix that position in the offseason if this Ridley thing is not short-lived. Mm-hmm. Um, Cordero, if he's active, or Daryl Williams uh, uh, this week? I would go Cordero. I'd go Daryl. <sighs> We're both going Daryl. Uh, thanks yeah. a lot, guys. I just got more core I mean, like, strength. Yeah, the, the good news is, at least the way I'm projecting it, I don't think you'll have to make that decision. I, You think Cordero's going to I sit? can't imagine Patterson plays. I do agree with that. All right. Well, Chris Carson didn't practice oh, on Wednesday. This, this is not good. Uh, Pete Carroll basically said he's not progressing the way that they had hoped. So you're looking at a situation where he could be – you could be singing this song every single week where they just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, he could play. I mean, I Alex Collins, right now you can't count on him on your fantasy team. No, you cannot. Alex Collins looks to be very important. Um, obviously, at this point, he's rostered. He's been picked up through waiver wires. But I would, I would be willing to kick the tires on on a trade offer. He hasn't done much over the last couple of weeks at all. I mean, you're talking five points, four points, five points the last three weeks. The fantasy managers are not going to want to hold on to this guy. But at the same time, this has been an offense mostly without Russell Wilson that he's been there, and then a sure. hobbled, weird Russell Wilson in the snow. <laughs> the weird, it weird, was weird so Russ. weird watching yeah. him this last week. It was like he didn't – he was not the same. But And, and Carroll came out again. We, we got to establish more. We he has he has quadrupled down on they need to establish the run and and if Carson needs some time to get back it's not the greatest matchup and I don't know if Russell is over his weirdness well he'll never be over his weirdness but um <laughs> unlimited you know, if he's if he's back to full strength on the field don't we, don't we have that at like, one time we did <laughs> oh man unlimited <laughs> yes I didn't know there was video to it um. It's against Arizona this week. That's hard. But then Washington, San Francisco, Houston are good Unlimited. matchups for the for the running back. All right, Kyler Murray limited on Wednesday. He says limited. He, limited. He says I hope. I hope so. I'm pretty close. He was followed up in that, and they said who who makes that decision. He said, you know, it, do, are you going to play this week? He said, I hope so. He and they said who makes that final decision. And he paused. He thought, like, am I allowed to say this? He goes, it's me. So if he's the one that's going to make the decision, it's not a doctor thing or a coach thing, and he's saying he hopes so, I'm leaning towards him being in. DeAndre Hopkins did not practice on Wednesday. Expect him to be out. There's still the bye week next week for the Cardinals, which could could keep Kyler out. Definitely will keep Hopkins out. James Robinson did not practice. They said uh, Ian Rapport said that it seemed minor and precautionary. Monitor that. But yeah, but of note, it is not just the heel. At least what was on the practice report, it was the heel and knee, which that would be new. So that probably precautionary because it's just Wednesday, but it's something to pay attention to. Elijah Mitchell did not practice on Wednesday. Kyle Shanahan is that because he just had surgery on his it's finger? It's due to the surgery. <laughs> Kyle oh, Shan- no, B reporter says fine. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan did say he expects him to play on Sunday. Oh, that's great. I um, That's that's good that he's going to be out there. I do think you'll see uh, – my name is Jeff? Yes. A little bit uh, more. A little bit more. He's a good play this week. Uh, Alvin Kamara returned to practice. Big news for Alvin Kamara managers. Tony Tony Brooks, James Jones <clears throat> Jr. also re- was designated to return from IR. Could be back soon. Tony. I don't think it matters whatsoever. No, I mean, Ingram's Mark Ingram's there. the guy. Yep. So. Uh, Chiefs may not activate Clyde edwards helaire again this week. They may wait for the bye week. In fact, I think they will. Sure. I mean, give them that. You know, when you can hold a player out one game and you get two weeks of rest who's coming back and iffy off the injury, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. DeAndre Swift limited in practice. Jamal Williams returned to a limited practice. Let's pay attention to that into the weekend. This one is a problem to me. Allen Robinson didn't practice at all due to a hamstring injury they're coming out of the bye week so yep. this is this is something pay attention that uh is new and could be a problem we'll be talking about the baltimore chicago matchup might be uh time for the werewolf moon is out oh is that a, that's a mooney <laughs> that's a darnell mooney hmm. how long have you been sitting on that one the werewolf about huh? about one and a half seconds <laughs> he wrote the word mooney down on his p- piece of paper. Yeah, I mean, M- but the already, werewolf was all a br- it's in his brain. Right. That was well, it was more the heart. But yeah, I mean, it was certainly the werewolf. It was from deep within me. Um, <laughs> the the truth is, Mooney's already been the number one target. Allen Robinson has not been. Um, but you take Allen Robinson out, I, I think there is a a solid 
game opportunity here for Darnell Mooney. For Cole Komet will see a bunch of targets. What's well, the latest on Latav- uh, the latest on Latavius? So he did. He technically returned to practice was limited. The, at least the video that was circling around the socials looked like a man who was very hesitant Limited. and very like gingerly walking around so we'll see he, they, he, they they released levy on bell so i would presume that latavius is coming back it was like a walk through like it was it was half speed and i've never seen someone look bad at half speed you know it looked like i don't know it was, it, it was bizarre not if the game was today i don't think he'd be playing uh chase claypool Return to a limited practice. So yeah, we'll could, see. You know, that week to week timeline could be getting closer. Jeremy McNichols didn't practice in the concussion protocol. This one's weird because I, I don't recall anything being said about McNichols suffering a concussion. Uh, but, I mean, if we're in the protocol here on Wednesday and there's a chance he doesn't play, we, we talked about. Deontay Foreman looks like the best running back. It's only two weeks, but the snap share in the in the percentage of the running back attempts, it did go up for Foreman, and they're playing Houston. So, like, Foreman becomes interesting. Yeah, I think it's a good descriptor for the situation there. Uh, more injury updates on tomorrow's show as well. We'll have the Injury Blitz podcast in the afternoon for Matthew Betts. To keep you apprised on making those start sit decisions, which are, I mean, they're hard. They're, they're they're tough. You want to make the right call, and the more information you have, the better. So that was today's news and notes, brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. If something's going on in the injury world, you're going to hear about it first by downloading the Sleeper app and joining the Breaking Alerts channel. Foot Clan. Today's podcast is sponsored by Better Health. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Mental health is incredibly important you take care of your body you should also take care of your mind and better help is a way that you can handle that they will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist you can start communicating in under 48 hours it's not a crisis line not self-help it is professional counseling done securely online look when and it takes the waiting room out of it right i mean it's let's be honest we're humans and i've sat in the waiting room for the counselor and it's, it's a little strange and awkward but better help takes that away because it is online and it's also more don't have to drive anywhere you don't that is also very true <laughs> it's there more are obstacles it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling financial aid is available i mean they are committed to great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed visit betterhelp.com slash footballers that's better h-e-l-p join the over two million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp. They are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Fantasy, fo- fantasy footballers listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash footballers. I also want to tell you about Noom. Thank them for sponsoring the show. Uh, maybe fantasy football players more than anybody else know what it's like to be trapped between a couple of choices, that binary decision, but then sometimes there's a third option. Oh, a better option. Tell me about it. And when it comes to losing weight, that's what Noom will help with. There's a lot of pressure out there to label foods just good food, bad food, that binary decision, that un- that unnecessary dilemma, and they approach losing weight differently, um, how we see food differently. They use a psychology-based approach. It's not about guilt and regret. It's about empowering you to keep going on your journey. And um, look, we've we've all signed up. We've used Noom. We we see the approach, and we've heard from listeners that this is something that has really been the difference. You know, instead of the fad diet, it's been taking this approach of being empowered to make the right decisions, not rules about losing weight. Wisdom, knowledge, empowerment, sustainable habits. So you can start building better habits for healthier, longer term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom dot com slash footballers that's n o o m dot com slash footballers fantasy forecast all right the thursday night preview the atlanta new england game that was on yesterday's episode of the podcast so you can go check that out let's kick it off here week 11 
with the Colts at five and five taking on the Buffalo Bills, who are six and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Bills home seven point favorites. Over under is fifty point five. Fifty point five. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was a bad one. I just couldn't. I mean, it's no werewolf joke, but it's it's <laughs> right. all right. Uh, Buffalo won in the playoffs 27-24 last year. Josh Allen went crazy, got him over the hump. And um, let's break this thing down for fantasy players. I'm really, really excited for uh, the Buffalo passing attack in this game. I, yep. I, I, This is a perfect matchup where I think the Colts are going to be able to do enough. I, it's really difficult to project anyone to have a good game against the Bills. The Bills' defense has just been unstoppable right now or or very stoppable in um in defensive terms so the Colts with Jonathan Taylor on fire um the, the breakout of Pittman I think they'll do enough to where the Bills are going to have to put put up points and it is hard to run on the Colts and it is easy to pass on the Colts so it's a really wonderful matchup to me and I you know when I'm building you know our our DraftKings lineups for tomorrow's episode I've been wanting pieces of this Buffalo Bills passing game. Well, and, and it helps because I, I agree with you, and I think the on-the-fence decisions, which to me are like Emmanuel Sanders um, and Dawson Knox even, mm -hmm. I think that they're very solid plays. And w it, this is the part of the year where we're not just looking at the total season defensive metrics. We're also looking at the past six-week metrics so you don't get fooled. And the Colts are very consistent. In, mm -hmm. in recent history, they – have been bad against quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends, and for the whole year they've been that way. So they've they've stayed strong against the run. The run is not a strength of the Bills. They're going to stay strong against the run. And Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, Dawson Knox. I mean, you can even throw Cole Beasley into the lineup. Hundred percent. Cole Beasley should be a great play if he's past the rib issue yeah. that I think limited him Ribbled. last week. I just wouldn't play Moss, Singletary, or Breida. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't play with the, the what is it, a Hydra now that you have in the backfield with three mm. options. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I, I wanted to throw out a couple names just to test that. So Zach Moss against the Colts or Ramondre tonight as a potential backup, as the probable backup. Well, that's a tough one, Mike. I, I think you probably go with... One of the two. Mm, I, tremendous. I, yeah, it, it's great analysis. <laughs> Thank um, you. I lean Ramondre Stevenson. Okay. Um, I I think he's I think he's the more talented player. Um, and I I'm not sure that their opportunity might be that different. Who's uh, more likely to score is all I care about, but I don't know the answer to it. Yeah, that's that's a coin flip. You could see getting down near the goal line, and I mean, I mean, you know that the Bills will put up more points, but I again, we expect that to come through the passing game, not the running game. Um, and if you told me who's more likely to get the ball twelve times, uh, that's a coin flip. So I'm I'm gonna go with the more talented player in in Ramondre, Zach Moss, or take the shot on Deonta Foreman against the Houston Texans. With uh, McNichols and concussion. We'll, 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 we'll flow chart that McNichols is out. I would give a shot with Foreman. Me okay. too. Uh, on the other side of the ball, this is a kind of don't do it week for the Colts offense because other than Jonathan Taylor, predictability is going to be hard. Michael Pittman is the, the toughest decision because of how good he has been. You also have a game line here at 50.5. I mean, the Colts are projected for 21 points in this game against the Bills. It's hard to not, you know, it's not all going to be Jonathan Taylor against this defense that is number one against the run on the year. So I think Pittman probably has to stay in your lineup. Is that where you guys are leaning? I, I agree. I, I don't expect good things. I'm not putting him in, uh, you know, uh, lineups where you get to, you know, your salary cap lineups. But I, I think if he's on your roster, I can't imagine Michael. that he doesn't get four receptions and have some kind of a baseline and, and they've used them near the goal line so Pittman or DJ Moore versus Washington yeah I'll play DJ Moore that matchup is too good yeah I think yep yeah. okay uh the Baltimore Ravens at six and three take on the three and six Chicago Bears the DK Sportsbook line Ravens minus five on the road over under is 45.5 Lamar Jackson and the Ravens have I think we said yesterday in the studio, played down to the competition. They have certainly disappeared on certain weeks. 
25 implied points in this game. A tough situation in the backfield. But confidence levels for this starting unit. You always play Andrews. You always play Jackson. Uh, Hollywood yeah, has Holly to be in your line. Hollywood is an always play. He, uh, you know, that's that's one of those. I think we've crossed that threshold. I uh, Yes, I Ma agree. With Michael that. Pittman has had a good month. Uh, Hollywood Brown has had a good year. Going back to the second half of last year, he was obviously in the never not working, one of those breakout players last year, um, and he's been phenomenal. He's the wide receiver eight so far on the season. He'll have his bad games, but he is a must start every single week to get the good ones, um, and he is actually 70% of his games over the last 17 have been good games, so he's actually been consistent. So um, I think Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson, and the rookie are all good uh, good plays this week. Yeah, I like Bateman. I think he's going to have a good week. The Bears are 23rd against opposing wide receivers in the last six weeks, 29th on the year, and uh, they should get some work done. On the other side of the ball, David Montgomery coming off the bye. Yep. He's, a, he's a smash play in this one. We just talked about Allen Robinson, the hamstring injury. Darnell Mooney all alone with a low passing volume, Justin Fields. You know, the one thing Justin Fields is doing, for those of you out there that, you know, want the lay of the land with the passer, Justin Fields, he's not completing a high percent of his high percentage of his passes. He's under 60%. But he is targeting people down the field. He is third in the NFL in terms of average depth of target. So he is actually taking shots down the field when he does throw the ball. I mean, it, it, none of that is equated to predictability for the wide receiver room. Yeah, certainly. But, but for, like, as far as starting Justin Fields, he also, in the last month, like his first couple starts, he wasn't running. And they finally, I don't know, the, whatever, I don't know if the team made the decision or Fields made the decision, but over the last month, you know, he's averaging over 40 rushing yards per game. He had the huge breakout two weeks ago. Uh, so I think that he, he would be like a fringe top 12-ish type of guy maybe yeah. maybe just outside he, and and he's he's running the ball so I, I i think he is on that cusp and and part of the reason um that you know with with alan robinson maybe missing this game um still being willing to to consider fields at the very least is cole Komet. yeah cole Komet is actually a really good play this week um uh, you know, I've I've looked at him in uh, DFS lineups. The matchup against Baltimore is great. It's been a month since Cole Komet had fewer than six targets, which for a tight end that's available in almost all of your waiver wires, that's great. Last time we saw him, he was six for 87. And that was Fields' best game. Right. So I, I, I do think Cole Komet is an interesting play this week. I would be willing to stream him. Did we discuss any of the decision making at the Latavius Murray Devontae Freeman level? We did not. We, did we not. didn't want. I wanted. To. I hoped. I blocked <laughs> it out somehow. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, if Latavius Murray is back, I'm playing none of them. That's yeah. how I feel. I and if he's not back, I'm not excited to play any of them. If he's not back, I would still throw Devontae Freeman in. He's been okay. He's averaged 11 fantasy points per game over the last four. Yeah. So he's fine. I, I would. I you know I would play Devontae Freeman over Ramondre Stevenson and, and Zach Moss if he is alone. Obviously, Lev Bell gone. So if Lev Bell's gone and Latavius Murray is not active, then Freeman's probably someone you have to start. Lev Bell being released could have also been just a kind of endorsement of Devonta Freeman. Yeah. And the fact that they feel confident with him doing all the things that he's doing and that Lev wasn't going to be better than him at any of them. I also think when it, the the cutting of Le'Veon Bell, um, when it comes to Tyson Williams, is have you ever done the thing where you you show a dog food and then you eat it right in front of his face? Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing to Tyson. <laughs> so they're like, "Ooh, we cut Lev. You got opportunity. Psych. You don't get nothing." That's what's just doing him dirty. That was a, that was John Harbaugh, right? That was an impression. Yeah, of exactly. Right. <laughs> Although I do love Harbaugh as a coach, he's a great coach. Uh, Detroit, the 0-8 and one Lions take on the five and five Cleveland Browns. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Browns minus eleven. The over under is forty three and a half. The Lions games, uh, they've hit the under six out of the last seven weeks. What? Shocking. Uh, you've got a couple of number one picks here: Baker, Jared Goff. Um, uh, maybe. Yeah, Jared Goff has that oblique situation. Yeah, I mean, you you could have Tim Boyle. Oh, 
Oh, boil rules. <laughs> oh. um, the Browns were the last team to go 0 and 17. Yeah, because they lost 17 in a row. Did they? Yeah. Huh. Dan that was Campbell. The, the versus... Hugh Jackson years? Yes. Who's such a good coach? Oh, <laughs> those were those were the good old days. Um I mean, this is a game that I'm not I'm not thrilled about. I really am not. The over under is low. The teams have been struggling. Nick Chubb is not yet off the COVID list. If he is, you obviously play Nick Chubb. If he's not, you obviously play Dearness Johnson. Yep. I, I would play Dearness Johnson either way. You just are changing your expectation of him. I think okay. if Chubb and Ernest uh, if fair. Chubb is active, Dearness will have enough work against this bad Detroit Lions team to have a very solid fantasy game. Jarvis Landry has not been helpful for fantasy no. players at all this year. So I think he's kind of off of your out of consideration with a beat up quarterback, Donovan Peoples Jones. Limited with the groin injury. He already had a game this year where everyone expected him to put up numbers, and he was active, and then he did not play. Yeah, that. So that's too concerning for me to put him out there. It, I'm, I, I was not concerned about him. He had, you know, a couple games in a row with 70 yards, 101 yards, 86 yards. Well, Cert I'm talking about the injury. Sure, but that's what I was saying. I, I had him in my lineup for tomorrow, and then the injury happened. Uh, at practice, he left practice yesterday again, um, and I, I I pulled him out. I, I'm not rolling with any of them here. I think Austin Hooper might be the the pass catcher of choice, and I don't want to choose. So I'm I'm rolling the running backs, and then I'm bailing. Yeah, Hawkinson is in. I, the goose hurts, but you got to move forward uh, with at the running back position. Swift was limited. Jamal Williams is back, uh, but Swift was limited. If somehow Swift misses this game, is Jamal Williams automatically in the the lineup with possibly Tim Boyle as the signal caller against the Cleveland Browns? I mean, yeah, you're you're looking for you'll just take the volume. You're looking for receptions. I mean, okay. you you just want if he's all alone in the backfield and you have you're throwing the ball to Khalif Raymond and Amon Ross St. Brown. And then not throwing it to Hawkinson. I I don't know. You I guess you have to. Is Jamal in if Swift plays? No. No, no way. No. It's not going to be an easy week for them at all. I mean, implied point total of sixteen points, and they've hit the under in all of these games. This is the the Browns should just be able to run the football. That's yep. that's kind of the way this game breaks down. Even Hooper is scary because I think they're going to have so much success running that are you going to need him if you don't get a play action pass on the goal line to Austin Hooper? You're going to be mad. Yeah, and, and yeah, I mean David Njoku can have a bomb. Uh, Austin Hooper can have a touchdown, and aside from those two singular plays, you, you don't want to. You, you don't want to play with them. Would you pivot away from Hawkinson if it's Tim Boyle, and go to a Cole? Would you play a Cole Komet? I don't. Oh, oh. Cole. Oh man, Cole Komet is interesting. I don't think I would pivot from Hawkinson. Um, we we marveled at the fact that he had one uncatchable target last week. It was unbelievable. But part of the reason why we marveled is because he was running a ton of routes and right now the secondary for the Browns is not the best there have been three games this year though where where Hawkinson has gone full miles Gaskin right oh sure where he's get two points three points zero points I just wonder if there's if Tim Boyle's enough of a reason to try to project another one uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, I, I'm not excited about that. I'm not excited about Jared Goff either. And the the goose sticks in your crawl here from last week. But the previous three games, <laughs> right in the crawl. The the previous. Where is the crawl? It's the crawl space. It's right. under your house. It's right. It's oh, really? You, yeah. Isn't that a body part? No, the goose is under your house, man. I believe it's. It sticks in your crawl. Crawl. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what well, I, I was talking a, about. The house. Not, there's not an L in there. <laughs> No, there was an L in there because I was talking about the house. Um, obviously, the goose is under the house. My point, Check your house. My point here is that Hawkinson, before the goose, was 10 for 89, 6 for 48, 8 for 74. Uh, even even when he's not getting a touchdown, he's not great. That's still probably better than Cole Komet. So I would I would roll Hawk. Um, Mike Gesicki's under my house. That's what you just said. Is yep. That, that's yep. The, him, him and Hawk. They get, were last week. Get him buried. out. He needs to go to practice. What is somebody's crawl? <laughs> that's is that what, something you we Google? need to Google that. Um, or don't. I don't know. <laughs> Seems scary. Uh, Houston at one and eight, taking on the eight and two Titans. 
Is this the uh, the almost upset oh, for any man. of you guys? Where is the craw located? <laughs> <laughs> the stomach of an animal. Oh, really? Oh, that's where your craw. It sticks right in the right in the craw. Right in the craw. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, that makes sense now. It it's way, makes way more sense than the bottom of the house. Uh, where are we? So when you eat some crawfish, it goes to your craw. Yeah. Mm. Oh, but you don't want to. You don't want to crawl stuck in the craw. Mm. No, that'd be bad. Uh, that where where are we? We're with the Texans playing football against the Titans this week. Uh, the Titans are eight and two. They're ten point home favorites on DK Sportsbook. The over under is forty four and a half. But again, when you have a game with such a big line. That's an implied point total of almost 28 for the Titans. Texans are down at 17. The Titans are just set up to steamroll right now. They got Houston this week. They get to play Jacksonville, Miami, and Houston uh, again the rest of this year. They have just found a way to stay dominant each and every week, and and they never – some of these weeks they just don't look it. You know, there's Correct. nothing – there's no statistical or fantasy evidence that this team is dominating – and here they are finding a way. Yeah, I mean, they're they're obviously well coached. And in this matchup against the Houston Texans, uh, I don't expect them to have a letdown. They did lose to the Jets. <laughs> that That's that's absolutely fair. Um, that would be incredible if two-thirds of their losses were the, Tets, uh, were the Jets and Texans, <laughs> also known as the Tets. Um, so... Uh. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Is that the new go to line when something goes wrong? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean when something goes wrong? That was, that was you fire. were just being efficient. Um <laughs> AJ Brown is obviously someone you're starting, but I expect him to dominate. Uh Mike, you were bringing yes. up the fact that he is uh, almost a TY Houston. He has dominated the Texans. The Texans don't have a single player who can guard AJ Brown. Um and, and on the I think the big question mark that everybody out there is, you know, hurting through is what Tennessee Titan running back to play. Uh, is it Devonta, Deonta Foreman who looks like he has the most juice? Um, is it Jeremy McNichols if he clears concussion pr pr protocol because he's the pass catcher? Is it Adrian Peterson because he's the Hall of Famer? Um, I'm not worrying about that decision anymore. It's Deonta Foreman. I'm not even thinking about that. If if they're all active, it's Deonta Foreman. If if McNichols is out, it's Deonta Foreman. I feel like in a game where you're favored by ten points against the Texans, this could be an Adrian Peterson show. I, that show has uh, been a bad. It's been ten for twenty one and eight for twenty one. I've seen enough. Yeah, it's it's not a good show. It's, no, it, it's, it should. They should probably take it off the air. It's Free not tickets. a good. It's not a good show. But he is a veteran who will come in, not lose the game against the Texans. And keep in mind, that was the Rams and the Saints that he was running poorly against. And obviously, sure. same teams I for Deonta agree. Foreman. No, I, I, it's pretty clear for me. I'm not touching 8 for 21 for Adrian Peterson. That, that floor is nasty. Okay. Deonta Foreman was the running back 26 last week. I, look, he, had, he had a big screen pass. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I love Deonta Foreman. He was, you he's always been, have. He, I always have. He's one of my favorite guys coming out that year, and I was devastated by the Achilles injury. So I hope it's him. Um, I hope they do just make that transition and say, you're the better running back, you're up. But we just see this from time to time where the, the wily old veteran just, you know, he's not going to, uh, you know, look at the Ravens, a well-coached team where it's like, Tyson is clearly the guy with juice, and they keep giving it to old busted Latavius Murray or uh, Devonta Freeman because they know they're not going to lose the game for him. And so that's what I'm saying. It's just this to me has the chance to be an Adrian Peterson game. Yeah, I. It's confusing, and if your snap counts went up for Foreman last yes, week, yes, and the attempt share, it it all everything is trending towards Foreman through two games. Uh, and I lean on the side of. If I have to play one of the Titans running backs, I would prefer to play Foreman, but it is it is super sketchy for, for all of these guys if you're going to start. Brandon Cooks and no one else on the Houston side, right? That is efficient. Correct. Yeah, let's. we don't need to linger, mm -mm, right? Nope. Next matchup. They, uh, they are the worst team in first down percentage in all of football. 22% of their plays are first downs. Uh, that's not good. Well, And Marcus Johnson is... In, if you're in a deeper league, uh, Marcus Johnson's a wide receiver for the yeah, for the yes for the flip Tennessee, back to the Titans. to the to, he's a, uh, for the Tets and he <laughs> he he's the one who had the the big game last week. 
Not that I think the AJ I think AJ Brown's going to have a monster game, but he's interesting this this week if you're struggling to fill a flex position. The Green Bay Packers at eight and two take on the Minnesota Vikings, who are four and five. Um, <laughs> the DraftKings Sportsbook line: Packers minus two. The over under is forty nine and a half. Uh, I I think the Vikings win this football game. Does that make them an almost upset? Absolutely, yeah. it does. Andy's almost upset of the week. See, I don't I don't know if I like the almost upset graphic because it looks like I picked the Raiders on every the graphics the same and it always looks like I'm circling the Raiders as my upset. Mm. I don't like that because th it, it used to be where you were just always picking the Raiders. And we also can't predict the future. Yeah, there's that too. So. Probably make that a little bit more team agnostic. Um, <laughs> I, I agree with you, though. Minnesota, I, I like Minnesota in this game. Green Bay Packers, uh, it is worth noting that their defense has been outstanding lately. Yes. Um, and it has come. I mean, we you look at last week. They shut down Russell Wilson. Now, I talked about Russell Wilson looked completely off. He's coming back early. You said off weird, of, but. Weird, sure. Um, he, he was terrible. And we, I blame Russell, but some credit has to be given to the Green Bay Packers defense as well, because the week prior was the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes scored what seven points. So then, what do you do with Adam Thielen? Because he's one of those more difficult decisions. You always play Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson, but Adam Thielen, couple weeks outside the top thirty in a row, uh, he has a ten. He can kind of hurt you and the matchup isn't great are you yeah I, I would look like would you play Mooney or Thielen I think it's a good debate um I would probably end up with Thielen because of the tendency around the goal line to um, be able to target him and you know just I think yeah. he's got a higher upside for touchdowns but I could easily see Thielen having a bad game and if if you have good options on your team where you're always debating between two guys on a, on the regular, I would bench Adam Thielen and tie break him to the end of my roster. It's worth noting that last year, the two games against Green Bay, Justin Jefferson just two for 26 and three for 26. Ooh. So they have limited him, limited targets. Could be a point in Thielen's favor there in that debate. Dalvin Cook, on the other hand, has dominated the Packers in recent history, 109-yard average. What was the stat? One point six touchdowns per game in his career against where? Them. Um, oh shoot! Who I, did Reeves tweeted out? Uh, Gonna Rich need to Rebar. give me a little the, bit more. The Dalvin Cook stat of he that he's been tackled. Oh yeah, he's been tackled on the one five times. five times, and then in the ensuing in that drive, then did not score. Yeah. So I like, guess in that's five times that Dalvin Cook probably should have scored at least two of those times. So you have you have some touchdown positive regression coming for him on the ground. They've they've thrown way more touchdowns than they've rushed in this year. It's been very strange. Yeah, because they try to run it in, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, Conklin. Tyler Conklin is is <laughs> leaking, yeah, baby, and no one covers him. Uh, Kirk Cousins, though that they, go that goose sound effect is working overtime. Yeah, it's doing a lot of. I mean, we'll, <laughs> it covers a lot of things. And I got a, the royalties to the actual goose <laughs> mm -hmm. are getting excessive. For Affleck this show. is doing well, <laughs> man. Kirk Cousins, though, are you willing to stream him at home against this Packers D that's been I so good? Prefer not. So yeah. Derek Carr against Cincinnati, you'd play over him. Yes. Mac Jones tonight. Mm, maybe I'd play Mac Jones over him. I'll say in the in the wild world of our dynasty league where I bench Kirk Cousins at. Uh, every suboptimal time, and Correct. I play him at every suboptimal time. Uh, currently, I have Justin Fields in as my starter over Kirk Cousins. Okay, so well, fire, is, up, that's fire up Cousins. That's bold. Uh, Russell Wilson over Cousins? Yeah, I yeah, would. Against Arizona at home? Yep. Uh, on the other side of the ball, Aaron Rodgers. Torched Minnesota last year on the road, 364-4. and four. As did Devontae Adams. Those things go together. Yeah, A.J. Dillon. <laughs> yes. He's a must start this week against yes, Minnesota, is. and then is that the end of the story? Yeah, the, the the it's actually really nice for fantasy 
when there is – we were talking about this with the Steelers. Like, their offense isn't good, but there's a consolidation of utilization where it's all, you know, a couple of players that do everything, and that's what's happening for the Packers, which is great. With Aaron Jones gone, it's clear. It's Aaron Rodgers, A.J. Dillon, Devontae Adams. Put them in your lineup and don't look anywhere else. Well, yeah, you have to kind of close that matchup down because you're eager and excited to talk about the Miami Dolphins at 3-7 and seven, taking on the New York Jets at 2-7. and seven. I've been waiting for the Tua Flacco matchup for most of my career, and now I get it. Isn't that satisfying, Brooks, to finally get the matchup you dream of? Oh yeah, that's the that's the Joe Flacco. Oh Old yeah, from... busted versus new busted. <laughs> oh oh no. no! But the Dolphins are playing better football. In fact, they've been the best defense against running backs in football over the last six weeks. Defense has come alive recently. A couple big wins. So maybe some hope and optimism that they're turning it around. And, and when you see a team that was projected to be better, that had a solid season last year, what were they, 10-6, and six, I believe, there, there is some hope that it's sticky, right? It's not mm -hmm. just an outlier performance, uh, a win here, a win there. You hope maybe they're getting back to what they were doing. So we have some, some players we like in this game from the Miami side. Yeah, absolutely, and and I think it starts with the Miami defense, first and foremost. I would love to stream them against Joe Flacco and yes. the Jets, um, and on the Miami side, uh, while I, I joke about, you know, new busted, Tua's been fine. I think this is a, uh, a decent matchup. He's a good streaming option this week, um, and I love... I can't say that in a soundbite. Uh, I think it's going to be a good week for Miles Gaskin, um, so yeah, this is... Uh, he he is someone you really should be playing this week. You're trying to just avoid any like singular sound clips where you That's show your adoration you for love Miles Gaskin. Yeah, you can't trap me. You don't want people <laughs> to know that you have uh, you're starting the number 22 running back on the year. Oh, don't get me started. Uh, Jalen Waddle. Absolutely. I think uh, when when you look at the Jets defense, it's out. It's something gorgeous for fantasy um because it's not there it's even gotten worse over the last six weeks 32 against quarterbacks 32 against running backs 31 against wide receivers 29 against tight ends are you uh redeeming the goose here is is mike gasicki coming out from underneath your crawl gasicki, your house gasicki is in <laughs> waddle is in gaskin is in tua is in it's it's a great week to be a dolphin got any problems with that mike no i do not what about uh, Joe Flacco? Is he in your lineup? <laughs> he, will, he will not be started. Michael, what Carter? about seven quarterback leagues? Would you probably you not, have to start seven? You have to start seven. Yeah, probably right. look elsewhere. Uh, Michael Carter. Big questions. Michael Big Carter's questions. a. He's been one of the most dynamic receivers at the running back position in football. Actually, he's you know when you look at Jonathan Taylor's averaging twelve after the catch at running back. Michael Carter's up there. I mean, he, he is averaging almost 10 per catch. Um, so the the running, you haven't seen Flacco with Michael Carter, but if there's anything that Flacco can do is, and the reason they're playing him over Mike White is there's a recognition of the blitz. There's a recognition of defenses, and that should mean Joe Flacco checking the ball down. I'm not unwilling to play Carter in a flex. Yeah, I think there's three players here. Carter, uh, Jamison Crowder, and Elijah Moore are all players that I don't expect to have a good game that would not surprise me to have a good game. And in PPR leagues, this is a team, the Jets, that you know, if you're starting the Dolphins and you like them, the, the Jets are going to have to throw the ball a lot. And the PPR options for Jamison Crowder is there. The PPR option, we don't know if he'll throw to Michael Carter, but he could, and in which case you're going to be safe there. And then Elijah Moore just has that kind of that rookie second half of the year high draft capital burst to uh, take something to the house. Now we're not we're ignoring Corey Davis entirely, which yeah. I don't know. I think Corey Davis might have a better game than Elijah Moore. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it's fun to chase the younger name, but Corey Davis, when he's played, has been targeted, you know, frequently. Even last week against Buffalo, five for ninety three in that game, just didn't have the Elijah Moore touchdown. Uh, was the number 19 wide receiver against New England. Those are tough matchups. Buffalo and New England ends up in the top 30 in both. I just don't know if – I feel like people are just completely ignoring him. It's that's, that's fair to point him out. I think because he was injured, he gets forgotten, and he wasn't a part of the Mike White fun. Um, right. So he does get forgotten. 
it's just a matter of where you think Joe Flacco is going to throw the ball, and you know if he's going to push the ball downfield, it would be good for Corey Davis. New Orleans at five and four take on the four and six Philadelphia Eagles. The DK Sportsbook line Eagles are two point home favorites in this game against the Saints. Really, the Respect. over under is forty three points. This is the one, Mike, when we were doing our picks yesterday that I wow. pointed out. I was like, oh, the Eagles, they're two point home favorites here. All right. Um, I think that is simultaneously commending their recent history while acknowledging the reality of the Saints, which is that they're not the Saints of old. Um, on offense, it's been a struggle. Trevor Simeon and Taysom Hill and... Kamara did return to practice. That's right. So Limited. I, I, limited, but returning to a limited fashion on Wednesday, at least that speaks to that, that Kamara will be back, and this it's... Uh, it's a fine matchup here against the running back or uh, against the Eagles who are in the last six weeks, 22nd against fantasy running backs. The hard part is I, I think I'm sitting the guys I was into last week, like Deontay Harris and Marquez Callaway. Yes, totally. I was cool starting them last week, this week against the Eagles. I'm less excited. They are, they are matchup plays and the Eagles shut down wide receivers. Yeah, um, th but they, they give it up to the running back. Yep. So if Alvin Kamara's in, obviously you're going to start him. If he's gone, then Mark Ingram should be started again. We saw, we've seen it for years now. When the main guy is out, the backup gets pretty much all of the work. Um, it, you know, it, in these temporary, we know he's only there for a couple of weeks. Let's run him into the ground, and, and that'll be Mark Ingram. So you're starting your Saints running back. Are you playing Mark Ingram with an active Kamara or Zach Moss? I'll play Ingram. Yeah, I think they're both the backup, but you've you've got a much better matchup here. Uh, Mark Ingram as the backup, or Dearness Johnson as the backup against Dearness Detroit. Johnson. Okay, I'll play Ingram. I think Dearness has more work and more juice at this point, and uh, I mean, as good a matchup with Detroit. Gotcha. The Eagles side of the ball. It's a tough matchup. The Saints defense can stifle, and they've actually covered all four games that they were an underdog this year. Uh, low over under, but Jalen Hurts with the rushing floor, you're fine? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you expect a bad game, so he'll be fine for fantasy. Uh, this, The one thing that's concerning is that both of these teams play very slow. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm not – I think I would take the under, even though it's already a low over under. So – this isn't the most enticing, like, throw all your assets out there. I think you, you hope for Devonta Smith to have a good game uh, and Jalen Hurts, and I'm not going to play with the running backs this week. Dallas Goddard still in the concussion protocol? Uh, correct. He has not been – I mean, obviously last week I guess you can kind of throw out, but nobody throws the ball less to the inside parts of the field than Jalen Hurts. He's actually barely doing that at all. I don't know if that has long-term implications for Dallas Goddard's success in the offense. It's interesting. Uh, because I, I can even picture some of the catches that he has had with Jalen Hurts. They've been on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't throw it underneath very much. And the, the backfield's really messy. Yeah. And you're playing a defense. Like, do you just avoid it this week? Yes, uh, there's you do. There's no situation where I would play one of those running backs. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> But uh, let's find out who we would play. Starts of the week. All right, a quick reminder, if you do want to check out all of our rankings, uh, the Start, Sit tool and the resources we have available as you make these decisions, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. All right. Uh, I'm going to let one of you guys start this one. All right, I'll start on the road, as all of my starts are on the road this oh, week. Oh, the road oh. warriors. The road warriors. Mm. Uh, Joe Burrow. Do you have any Tets on your team? <laughs> <laughs> I would never. Um, I, I've got someone playing against the the T-E-T-S, Tets, Tets, <laughs> Tets, though. Um, but we'll get there. I'm going to start with Joe Burrow What's against happening? the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. They're coming off the bye. He's, uh, he's still a young quarterback. With you know, We talk about all these rookies getting better second half. I can't fathom that Jamar Chase is going to get better second half because he's oh, he, otherwise he'd have the best season of all time. But um, obviously, there's a young team that I think is should be improving as the season goes on. Um, off the bye, the matchup is okay. Burrow ranks third in uh, NFL in touchdown rate right now. The Bengals throw inside the 10-yard line at the second highest rate in the NFL. That's and, huge. And the Raiders are allowing the third most plays per game. 
his weapons are elite. I love T. Higgins. I love Jamar Chase. Uh, when Tyler Boyd is the third, that's where Tyler Boyd is supposed to be, and it's actually a pretty darn good matchup for tight ends. If you've seen a couple of those Uzama monster games, I don't want to like call my shot on Uzama, but I sure want the points. I when thought it goes about him in DFS to Joe Burrow. He was he was in and out for me. All right, Mike, who's your quarterback? I'm going with my streamer this week, and it is Tua. For the Miami Dolphins taking on the New York Jets. Over the last five games, they have allowed top 12 production to the quarterback position. We highlighted the Jets are just atrocious on the defensive side of the football. And they've given up a top five performance or top five quarterback points in three of the past four games. Like they they stink and Tua has been Tua has been fine in his limited starts this year. I'm actually going to Step out on the limb here and take Ryan Tannehill as the oh, start of the week. I love it. He's played the Texans four times as a starter of the of the Titans. Uh, quarterback four, quarterback ten, quarterback three, quarterback five, with twelve total touchdowns. So it's all about the matchup here. This should be his best game of the year. This week should be the best game that he has. It's it's even compounded with the running game struggles and the dependency on Ryan Tannehill. The Texans are bad at football, so I think the the Tannehill start will will be fine this week. They've been they've had to rely on him more. I mean, we've seen Derrick Henry out for three weeks. We've seen Ryan Tannehill in the top ten two of those three weeks, and he had he'd only been in the in the top twelve twice in those first seven weeks. Like the offense is shifting over the last couple of years. He's he's also gotten better in the second half. You know, we've made a lot about the Yeti getting stronger when it gets cold, but but down the stretch, Tannehill's played good football. So I, I like that. I'm I'm going on the road again. I'm going to New York to the Jets for Miles Gaskin. And if I have Miles Gaskin as a start of the week, a guy who I don't think is very good, um, then you know that you should start him. He has he has um Done the thing where you go back and forth and back and mm -hmm. forth for six weeks in a row. Great game, awful game. Great game, awful game. Great game, awful game. Oh, baby. And that's obviously stupid analysis. I'm not saying that that is what is going to cause it. But what I love about that is that the bad games are not causing the coaching staff or Gaskin to not get the work. They're just sticking with it. Well, guess what? You get to stick with it against the Jets, and that's why I'm starting him. The Jets are getting annihilated by opposing backfields. How bad? Their current 16-game pace is for 550 fantasy points allowed to the running back position. That is the most fantasy points ever by a wide margin. They are absolutely terrible against running backs. I think this is the week for Miles Gaskin uh, to be played. And I got Leonard Fournette taking on the New York Giants. The Giants have allowed the eighth most points per game to uh are allowing the eighth most points per game to the running back position including six top 12 weeks Leonard Fournette is the running back 13 on the season he is playing excellent football he's a great fantasy football player since week four where things made the shift to Leonard Fournette is essentially our full-time guy he's averaging over 16 fantasy points per game that is right behind Zeke I'm going to go with the running back nine on the year, James Conner in Seattle against a Seattle defense that is allowing the second most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Arizona runs the ball at the second highest rate in the league, and I think Kyler will play in this game. Elite usage for Conner, the first time you're going to get to see him. No Chase Edmonds with Kyler Murray, assuming Murray is out there. Mm -hmm. But either way, the matchup is delicious. He leads the league in rushing touchdowns. He has... More rushing touchdowns than 22 NFL teams. Wow. So he has 11 on the year so far. So I'm going to go James Conner. That's wild. I like it. At wide receiver, uh, I'm going on the road <laughs> to Kansas City. Um, Amari Cooper last week was CD Lambs. Really every week is CD Lambs because he's awesome. Um, but Cooper had a tough week against Atlanta's cornerback, A.J. Terrell. You can have confidence in Cooper this week. Kansas City is allowing the third most passing yards, the fourth most 20 plus yard plays. Amari Cooper is a good player. He leads the. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, he leads this team in end zone targets. Dak will utilize him in the red zone. Um, obviously, I love both CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper. I think that this is an outstanding game, Cowboys against the Chiefs. I want a piece of that, and Cooper, I'm not afraid of his bad last week. I've got Emmanuel Sanders in a bounce-back game against the Indianapolis Colts. Over the last three weeks, the Colts are allowing the second-most points per game to the wide receiver position, and that was against Tennessee, 
the Jets and Jacksonville. He still has the massive average depth of target at over 18 yards. It simply has not hit recently. And we saw early on in the season what happened when, you, when you're when you getting those air yards and it just hasn't hit. Eventually it will. You will you will average out. And I think that this is the week that we get Manny Sanders back being a, a very startable asset. Now I'm going to go a little deeper here at wide receiver. I'm going to go Rashad Bateman. The rookie okay. at Chicago since coming off of IR, six targets, six targets, eight targets, eight targets. Every single play you watch, the eye test, the way he runs routes, finishes, uh, his hands. The Bears are a funneling defense. They funnel to the wide receiver. They allow the fourth highest target share to the wide receiver, the fifth highest uh, target success rate to the wide receiver. And, and Hollywood, a lot has been made of this season for him. But Bateman is here. He's going to be a part of this offense. All of the facts and figures you've given to why you like the consistency of Hollywood, which has a lot to do with the running game struggling and not being something they depend on, they exist for Rashad Bateman. There is a clear margin between him and Sammy Watkins. He's the future of this team along with Hollywood. So I like Bateman this week. Yeah, I do too. Um, uh, at tight end, I'm going to go on the road. To Los Angeles <laughs> against the Chargers, and I'm going to get Luth. The Muth is oh. Luth again. Look, Pat Fryermuth, for all the fun we've had with his name, um, has been awesome. Yes, he has. Uh, the last month, he's a, he's a rookie this year. We talk over and over about them being better in the second half of the year. Over the last month, he's on a pace of 123 targets and 90 receptions. Uh, he's obviously utilized around the goal line. We don't know if Big Ben will play or not. Either way, he had nine targets last week, and the fantasy finish looks bad because of that last fumble. Obviously, uh, very uh, bad in the rain and the sleet. That was uh, kind of a nasty game that they played in where they tied, but Pat has been a big part of this offense. I think he's very talented, and the Chargers are a funnel to the tight end. They're 28th in fantasy points given up to the position, so I like Pat Pat F this week. <laughs> Pat F? Yeah, and, and I've been trying to bring up streaming tight ends the entire season, and I feel like Rafiki. Mm -hmm. It is time. Adam Troutman, baby. This is the time. This is the week. We're finally getting it where I can confidently say this is the guy that I want to stream against the Philadelphia Eagles. Over the last five weeks, they are allowing the most points per game to the tight end position. And over the last three weeks, if you haven't been paying attention to the Saints, there has been a shift. Adam Troutman, in his second year, in the last three weeks, we're, we've seen the target share rise to 17% over those three weeks. He hasn't done a whole lot with those targets just yet, but I think that this is the week that we finally see a top 12 performance from Adam Troutman. All right, I will go with Dawson Knox this week against the Colts. First game back last week, 84% of the snaps against the Jets. Didn't do much. Had an end zone shuffle pass target that didn't work out. But uh, oh, First game back. Over the last six weeks, well, the Colts are 30th against fantasy tight ends. We talked about it in the matchup. I mean, they, the, Emmanuel Sanders, you, you brought him up. Dawson Knox, I'm playing both of them. I'm playing both of them against you, Mike, in our Dynasty League. That is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think you know Vegas likes Josh Allen to hit at least four touchdowns in this game, and Dawson Knox Dawson. should be a part of it. <laughs> Gross. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Who stained my mood waned until my rescuer spoke. Big shimmy, let's swimmy, and I jumped ship with the Patriots' Nick Folk. <laughs> if I may speak first, this was my best work I've ever done. <laughs> Big shimmy, let's swimmy. I've been looking forward to oh, jumping off that freighter for a while now. That was so now you are you are in the water. Yes, we're in the middle of the ocean. So this we're, year we're has have been problems. this year has been like I didn't know if we would eventually retire this segment. You know, you don't like kickers. This mm -hmm. has always been an ironic, uh, but my goodness, this storyline. This is getting like, picked up for more seasons. It's gonna you, be a New York Times bestseller. If you have followed along with this segment, this segment started what. 
four years ago. It was a pure troll of Jason. Yes, we we, we did not tell him this. I segment. had no idea it was coming. We dropped it on him, and and Jason, as a good sport, attempted his best in that moment to give like actual fantasy football analysis on kickers. It continued for a while that you really were trying. <laughs> To dive deep into the stats and figure out who's going to be a good kicker this week. Yeah, so wait, is this... And eventually it turned into a rhyme with the analysis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now we're I've just... I've gotten rid of the analysis. And now you're now just... That's just storytelling just and Just a regular Steinbeck over here. Mm -hmm. I was getting... Well, and it's really upgraded this year due to you becoming so much better at the English <laughs> yes, language. Yes, yes. Uh, but how... What percentage is what rhyme fits and what percentage is the kicker you actually like? Um, it was probably... I'm going to say uh, one of them is... Kind of so 55 45 I'm not telling you which all right we want to thank pristine auction be an auction right now a marquee hollywood brown signed jerseys at 19 dollars what that ends tonight Excuse so you can check that me, out gentlemen yes need to go to pristine auction. Brooks, scoop that up please um another auction ending tonight is that is this right the the Devonte adams jersey is at four dollars and 20 cents right now oh one sec that was uh 50 dollars actually okay oh, well, this, it was 50 dollars but you wrote 420 down yeah, I had another <laughs> Take item it easy, there. Brooks. My yeah. mistake. Uh, but you can check out hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions at pristineauction.com. Get that Marquise Brown, Brooks. Yes. Uh, use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Enjoy. Enjoy, everybody. We'll be back after this uh, barn burner tonight where Matt Ryan goes off for, what, 405 Probably. All right. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.